Hi guys, this is Shannon with Shannon McTie Photography. I am excited to edit some photos with you with the new Zeppelin collection. This collection has a bunch of presets that help you customize to get your own look for your photos. It's kind of like the sister pack to the Tiny Dancer collection, and I'm really excited for you guys to see these. So you can honestly start anywhere inside this pack. I know traditionally a lot of people like to start at the beginning and work their way down with darker, lighter, getting your white balance correct. For me, the first thing I am gonna do is brighten it a little bit. Our sun had dipped behind the mountain at that point and kind of got dark on me quick. So I just wanna brighten it up really quick. The next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to warm it up. You could do the auto white balance, or if you prefer to have a little more say and how warm you want it, you can use one of these. I'm just gonna do a little bit of warmth. Um, you have the chili too if you prefer it cooler. And then under here you have your AI adaptive brushwork, for, so like for your subject, your background. For me though, I'm actually gonna come down here to the muted color grading uh, first and kind of see what I like first and then go back and do my subject enhancements and my background enhancements. So there are a bunch under here, and I honestly am obsessed with all of them. And you can just see as I hover over them, each one, what each one does. Kind of gets you a different look. I like a little bit more of the muted look of By the Brook, but I'll show you kind of all of them here so you can see. There you go. But I am gonna go with By the Brook for this one. And then I'm going to come back up here under the adaptive brushwork and I'm going to select whichever subject that makes the most sense. There's the luminate subject and you have clean, cool, warm, green, magenta. We did it this way because one, there's been many times where I feel like I need more magenta in my subjects or I need more warmth or I need it more blue. But another thing is Nikon versus Canon versus Sony, each one pulls a little bit more colors than the other. So having all of these will help with each different camera type. And so for this one in particular, I like what it does to the skin tones with the magenta. So I'm gonna click the magenta one. And then I think I'm just gonna lower right here the amount down to like 85. And then I'm gonna go to the background and there's a couple different ones. We have the brilliant background, same thing where you have the clean, cool, warm green and then the darkened background. And this really pulls down your blacks and pulls down the curve a little bit to make it nice and deep. For this particular photo though, I'm gonna use the brilliant background. I don't want it that dark, but I also am gonna add magenta, trying to get those rocks to be a little more orangey. So I'm gonna click that. And then once I have that, I'm gonna keep going down. And there is another section, it's called the adaptive retouch section. And I, I am excited about this. So you know how you can do your brushwork and you can still do brushwork with this. We have some brushes that are amazing that I'm excited to show you. But sometimes it's nice to just be able to literally click like where it says soften skin, just click on skin. And this is going to soften all the skin in the photo. You can click on like lip color, this just adds a subtle amount of lip color with softness to the lips. You can do hair contrast. You can see if I take it off before and after. So I'm gonna click on the hair contrast, adds a little more depth. And same with clothes enhance, it's just gonna make the clothes pop out a little bit more. And then we did picked one under the muted color grading. So under this section, we had picked by the brook. And what I meant to say earlier was you can pick just one. These. Inside this section right here, you just pick one, and then you can go to the next section under minimalistic color, and you can actually stack another preset on top of one of these, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna stack rock and roll on top. You can see how it kind of brightens it up, gives makes it a little warmer. So I'll click on that. And then I'm gonna keep coming down here. This is like little, our black and white section, just to convert it over to black and white if you'd like. The realistic blur gallery. This is really nice if you're looking to get some blur into the background of your photo. Any of the depth of field, you can play around with these and they'll give you different kinds of blur. Same with the light leaks here. As I hover over them, you can see what they look like. On this particular photo, these don't look correct just because we have rocks surrounding them, kind of framing the photo. But under the sunshine flares, I do really like 
the ethereal center, if I take it off, it puts it nicely right behind them where the sun naturally is coming into the photo. Same with the lustrous right here. This adds a little more warmth. So I personally like the lustrous center more than the ethereal only because I like the warmth coming in on this one. So I'm going to click that. And then under the finishing adjustments, you can stack these as much as you want. I'm going to do the vibrant pop because I like the colors that it's pulling, but I'm just going to lower it down a little bit right here. I think that's good. And then I'll keep going down. You can drop your colors. You can lower your, your curve right here, increase it, make it brighter. This one's going to let you pop your highlights, which I really like. So I'm going to click pop the highlights. This one will drop your shadows, and this one does a combination of both. It kind of gives it that shiny look. This one will add more clarity to the flip photo. And then I, I really like this one on a lot of my photos. Not particularly this one in particular, but this just gives a little backlight to it. And then under the bonus enhancements, you can choose your details, like how heavy you want your sharpening to be. So I'm just going to go right in the middle and choose a medium detail. But then I also am going to do a medium noise reduction. So it's going to pull any of that grain off the skin. And then if you like green, you can hover over any of these and add some green. But for me, I think that's good. I'll come back to the top. So before we do any brush work, I just want to show you this is before and this is after. I love that and after. So now we're going to do some brush work. So we are going to come over here and you can see the ones that are already right here. These are the AI portions of the presets over to the left here. So you can still go in here and make adjustments if you wanted to, but I'm going to add some more brushes. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just fix the greens a little bit in the background and I'm going to get a brush. I'm going to keep my flow and density up really high for this one. And for me, I'm just going to go over the greens. I don't care if it gets on the rocks or my subjects at all, because I'm just going to erase it off of them. So that's good. Then while I'm under here, I'm just going to click subtract subject. So it takes it off of them. And then let's say I got a little bit on the rock that I didn't want. You can go and get a brush and subtract it off the rock as well. And then I'm going to come over here. And these are the brushes that are included in the pack and kind of like the Tiny Dancer, we have a section for greens. So all of these will adjust your greens. For this particular one, I think I'm going to do the soft warm greens. I tend to lean a little bit warmer in my editing. So then if I turn this off and on, that is before, that's after. And it just added a little bit of warmth and honestly it made it a little more uniform, the greens. And so I really like that. The next thing I'm going to do is get a brush, and this is just me being picky, but I really don't like it when my mountains turn like a neon blue, because they obviously are not blue in real life. And then I'm going to come down here and choose, where's my blue, my muted blues. And then you can see this is before, this is after. It's subtle, but it pulls that blue out of it, which I really like. And then again, me being picky, I don't want the reds on my mountains either. So I'm going to get another brush and I'm just going to go over my mountain. And it's okay that it went on the sky because again, you can come here and click subtract sky and it'll take it right off the sky. And then I'm going to come down here and go to muted reds. And then you can see that's before and that's after. And it does make the mountains really fade out. So I'm just going to lower the amount. But I don't mind the mountains fading out because naturally when that sunlight's coming through, it does cause that kind of like effect where it looks like the mountains are getting lighter and lighter as you it goes further out. So I don't mind it at all. And then the next thing I want to do is I'm going to get another brush. And we're just going to go over the rocks because I really want my colors to come out more in the rocks. And again, I don't care if it goes over my subject. I'm just going to easily erase it off them here in a second. Perfect. And then right here you just click subtract subject and it pops it right off of them. If, you, if this ever happens, like you can see where it did not come off of her leg really well, you can just come over here to subtract. You can grab a brush, make it a little bit smaller 
and just erase it off their legs. There we go. And now I'll come over here and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna pick Amplify Color because I really want those rocks to stand out. So, so far, if I turn it off, this is before and this is after in here. I'll move this over so you can actually probably see it in the photo better. This is before, this is after. I like it. I actually want it stronger though. So I'm gonna pull up the amount. I'm over here on the right. I'm just gonna pull it up to right there. Now if I turn it off, this is before and this is after. And I like that. I just wanted a lot of color in the rocks. So yeah, that's good for me. And then one of the last things I'm going to do is I just want my subjects to be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to get a radial gradient. I make sure my feathering is, as you can see, 100%. And that makes it where from the center out, it's a very nice gentle feather. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to lift my shadows. When I brighten my shadows, it's going to make it really bright because obviously that's like 100%. I am going to pull it down quite a bit to even like 20. And then you can grab it and kind of move it around where you want it. I can make it a little bit bigger, make it higher. And then I might even drop it a little bit more. I just want them a little brighter and a little goes a long way with this one. So then if I come back over here to this eye, I can turn it off and you can see that's before and that's after, but it gives a really nice boost of light on them. And I love that quite a bit. So then I can turn that off and then I would call this good. Yeah, I'll show you the before. This is before and this is after. So it's pretty quick, it's just a few different clicks. And then to make it easier for you, if you have a bunch of photos that are in the from the same session, you can literally go to copy and you can check all. The only things I personally uncheck are transform, remove, and crop because I don't want it to crop every photo the same way or transform it. You hit copy and you can literally go to each photo that you like and just paste it on there. Or you can sync it, usually over here in the bottom right corner, you can sync all your photos. And so your editing can be streamlined that way. So hopefully you like it and that you learned a lot with it. If you want any more information, you can go to www.greaterthangodspeed.com.